Let's take a quick step back from our good friend Clementine, shall we? Telltale's miniseries Michonne follows our favorite sword-wielding Walker Dicer as she traverses a world full of dangers, dead and living. Let's see just how much damage Michonne can do in her time away from Rick's group following the events of All Out War. Bet you didn't know that one, did you? And as always, dear viewers, spoilers lurk in every corner, so listen closely. I'm Brian Mitchell. And I'm Ian Stark. And this is The Skybound Rundown. We open on Michonne, destroying the shit out of some bushes. She then sees two little girls who begin the longest game of hide-and-seek ever recorded. <gasps> What's this? A door? Michonne enters and we're now jumping between reality and her psyche. She's attacked by walkers and two little girls escape into a bedroom. As she approaches the room, a man exits. Back to reality. Michonne falls to her knees and raises a gun to her head. Do we shoot or put it down? Of course we won't shoot! Suddenly an outstretched hand reaches to help us up. Phew, badass theme song. Why love put a gun in my hand? We then wake up on a boat with our helping hand, Pete, along with his crew, Sadiq, Berto, and Oak. Our man Pete starts futzing with the radio and thinks he's picked something up. Step aside, let Michonne handle this. After we did some more futzing, we heard a voice, and it sounds like it's saying help and family. Shit, what the f oh, bloody hell. Our boat is stuck. We try to fix it and we see a broken down ferry in the distance. Let's check it out. So we accompany Pete on a little baby boat. Baby boat, baby boat. We struggle our way through and made it to the ferry. We break in and, my God, there was a massacre. After looking around a bit, we found a duffel bag full of goodies. So we search around and throw some things in. Ooh, this looks freshly packed. Because it was. By brother and sister Greg and Sam. They've got their guns drawn on us, but some walkers interrupt. Damn. We destroy the shit out of them and demand that they release only the items we packed in the duffel. But then, more interruptions. This time by a man named Randall and his people. It turns out that these are all his goodies and he assumes we helped Greg and Sam steal from him. Looks like we're now hostages as we're hauled off to Monroe, an offshore community that prides themselves for their safety. And here we meet Gabby, Jonas, his boyfriend Zachary, and their leader, Norma. Off to jail with a lot of us. Sam manages to get her hands free to try and mount an escape when someone opens the door. Oh, hey Randall. No! But it didn't work as planned and he knocks Sam out and takes us up to see Norma. We tell her most of the truth, everything but our crew that's still stranded on the boat, but Norma isn't buying that shit. Really? So they bring up Greg to cross-reference our stories. There's more of us, well-armed too. Shit, he just fucked us. Randall then takes us down to Jonas and Zachary's room and forces so-called useless Zach to get information out of us. Ah! Oh, good boy, Greg, wish we knew ye. A distraught Sam gets the gun from Zach ready to pull the trigger. Do we let her kill him? or stop her. Sam, put the gun down. Why? He's a murderer! Killing him won't solve anything, so we wrestle the gun away from her, only to have it end up back in the hands of Zack. But he feels pretty shitty for what he's done. I can't undo what I did, but maybe I can help. We take Zack up on his offer, and Jonas and him help us escape. They make a distraction so we can make our way up to Pete. Sneaky, sneaky. But Norma and Randall discover us fucking quick. Do we drop our sword of courage and strength, or do we fight back with all our heart? We decided to hold on to it until Sam stumbles into the scene. I said drop it while you still have it. Randall goes for the gun, but we stop him in his tracks. We make our way out with Pete, but they sound the alarm. The trio becomes cornered in a boat's cabin. We're totally screwed. Pete sees only one way to solve this predicament. Walk out and reason with Norma. Pete, don't do it. We stop him and go on ninja on their asses. A boat race ensues, but we escape the burning city of Monroe with our lives. We get to the beach. Some of our friends want to hang out. But our enemies aren't finished yet. Bullets rain down on our heroes. How will we escape? It's not like we're just going to walk through those things. Michonne uses a nifty little trick she learned in the past, and they literally do walk through those things. But Randall rolls in hot. In the woods! Oh. Where to next? Sam's house, of course, where her family awaits in a safe home. She leads Michonne and Pete to a hazard safe and up to code ladder. It's not as bad as it looks. We decide to take her word for it. The Trace Amigos climb up, but familiar company finds them fast. Ah! Randall, you ah! bastard! We get Sam home, and after a wonderful welcome from her friend Paige. Ah! Don't fucking move! We head inside and put a band-aid on Sam. Ah! Once her dad runs in and we finish playing doctor, we formally meet the rest of the surviving Fairbanks family. John, James, and Alex. Where's Greg? 
we inform John that his son has passed on. Oh, Gregory. But Michonne is carried off into cuckoo land once more, frantically searching for her daughters, Elodie and Colette. The apartment is very clean and untouched. Nothing wrong here. When suddenly, footsteps accompany a shadow along the hole beneath the door. Pick up the phone or go with the stranger in the hallway. Screening calls is annoying as fuck, so we pick it up. Hello? It's our friend Donna, who lets us know that husband at the time, Dominic, seemed to have been bitten. The call ends terribly. Donna! Donna, get out of there now! Paige apologizes for shooting at us. We remind Sam her brother is dead, and John asks for a word in private outside. He confides in us about his late wife and how distraught he is with the loss of Greg. God damn it, Randall! Peekaboo. Fighting commences. <laughs> but we get the best of Randall. <laughs> Randall is secure, but Norma radios in on the walkie. We decide to pick up, and Norma asks for her brother in return for her group's safety. We agree to work with Norma, as long as Randall behaves himself. He doesn't start the post-call process too well. I'm gonna take that wrench and break your skull. Ninja swing! Sam walks in, and Randall politely tells them that he shot their father. The group leaves in a fit of rage and sadness, and Randall just won't shut the fuck up. I ain't I the bell of the ball. Michonne's anger grows, and she raises the monkey wrench in the air. Do we spare his life, or stoop down to his level of despicable actions? We spared his life, which is a better bargaining chip to have alive. We leave, awaiting Norma's arrival. Your funeral. And we're back on the boat, two weeks previous to the current events. Here we get to know Oak better, and he asks us to join their card game. How could we refuse? I like Oak. Me too, Brian. Freezing my ass off. Back to the present. Sam walks into the garage and kicks Randall around a bit. Paige tries to hold him back, but we decide to pull her off. Ring, ring. Norma's back on the walkie, and she has the rest of our crew from the boat. Time to make a trade under one condition. Anything you do to Randall, I will do to them. She's got herself a goddamn deal. We need to be prepared to fight, and after that, we all need to get the hell out of here. Sam then storms out, convinced that she needs to hold her ground and stay at the house. She begins to try and bury her father, but there's no time for that. Norma's on her way. Sam, you've got to leave with us. Michonne then heads into the house to find the missing duffel bag of weapons that Norma and Randall tirelessly search for. We hand out weapons to everyone but the youngest, Alex, who hides out in his closet. Time to say a few words for Papa Fairbanks. Oh, shit. With Paige perched on the second floor of the house, we open the gate and crank the tension to 11. Norma signals to bring our people and the standoff officially begins. She gave us one of ours, so we'll give her Randall. But before we do, Norma's soldier Gabby gets some retribution of her own and shoots Berto. Rat bastard! That's enough. Paige hits Norma in the shoulder and the blood begins to shed. Fuck! Randall then gets away from Sam and she gets her revenge. Walkers decide to join the party and we try to hold the gates closed so the others can get to cover. We make a run for it and after getting dazed by a shotgun blast, Michonne and Norma duke it out. Stay down! We get the upper hand. <laughs> And after she gets munched on by the walkers, we made the decision to put her out of her misery. Back to the house. Once inside, things get interesting as a few Molotov cocktails turn this place into a raging inferno. We go to gather everyone, but our subconscious seems to keep interrupting. Michonne traverses the flaming house while being plagued with visions of her husband and daughters, but it's time to let go. As we're faced with a huge decision, we decide to leave the kids. They're gone now, and she needs to come to terms with that. Goodbye, Minnie Michonnes. And we've made it, most of us intact. As we sit on the shore, we say goodbye to Sam, her brothers, and Paige. Pete then tells us that we should stop running and go back to our old group. Could that be? It's possible, but for now, we decide to stay with Pete and his pirates. Bon voyage, my dear friends. Where will Sam, Paige, and the youngins head to next? What will happen to the survivors of Monroe? Will Michonne stay with Pete, Oak, in the open sea? What lies ahead in Michonne's motherly tale of heartache and despair? Her story ends for now, but you can make your way further into the apocalypse with Clementine and Telltale's The Walking Dead, Season 3, A New Frontier, available now. Our rundowns end for now, dear friends, but don't you worry. We'll be back soon to bring you some awesome new content, only on Skybound. Did you let Sam shoot Zachary? Did you kill Randall in the garage? Did you hand Randall over to Norm at the gate? 
Did you choose to run to safety or stay behind with your daughters? Let us know in the comments what decisions you made, and if you'd like to continue Michonne's unique tale, check out the comic books at your local comic shop or comicsology.com. Remember folks, don't forget to subscribe to the wonderful world of Skybound. Thanks for tuning in, guys.